So basically, I want to share the the uh, definitions, and then after that, the different types of civil society organizations that we have uh, uh, here, as well as perhaps nationally, and then the roles of the civil society, and, the, and then after that, the challenges that we face. Okay, and a little bit of sharing at the end on on uh, who is Rose and uh, why we are here. Okay, I think that's just about sum up uh, what I'm going to do. Okay, um, civil society organizations, when, when, when you hear the word civil society, uh, basically it is a space, uh, it is an area or space that is outside the family. It, some, some people define it as, uh, scholars define it as an area outside the family, market, market as in the economy and business, and state. Uh, so there's an area or space that is outside the family, market, and state. Other definitions are, all forms of social action carried out by individuals or groups who are neither connected to or managed by the state. The state in this case means the government or the government of the country. Um, another definition by Asian African Development Bank is voluntary expression of the interests and aspirations of citizens organized and united by common interests, goals, values, traditions, and mobilized into collective action. So that's another definition. All that means um, civil society is a space that um, uh, is a co collation or collection of uh, different people or different community groups with different interests, you know, um, and perhaps wanting to do some action to make um, the country in which it exists a better place. Yeah? I would assume that this is the role of uh, each of the uh, civil society organizations that we have even in our place here. Um, nation building is the slide that I left out. So when you hear the word nation building, it is like, like a very big word. So if you what what I understand by nation building is that it is a uh, it is a it is something like democratization. No? It is a process of constructing or structuring uh, a national identity, usually to unify the people uh, so that the country prospers, the country develops, the country becomes uh, progressive politically, economically, and socially as well. So you would assume then that civil society exists for a purpose of building the nation. Uh, um, of course, it is a force other than the state or outside the state, that can be harmful as well. Huh? But on our side here, um, I strongly believe that each of the civil society organizations that we have in this country is, is to build, is to try to build our nation. Okay. Now, when you think of nation building, just like when you think of um, building a house or building a structure, um, it, it, you know, we are all different parts of that, of this process of building or developing. And um, it can be the brick, it can be the mortar, you can be the values that bind all the workers together to work to work on the house so that the house gets completed, you know. And on the other, and, and, and don't forget, when you are building something, or when you want to build something, you could be also wanting to tear down the old structures, right? Yeah, those who have done renovations will know you've got to tear down the right parts of the old structures. So if there are structures that are burrowed, that are rotten, you know, you want to tear down as well. And some some of us may have a role in that. Okay? So if we are if we are watchdogs, I can just literally link it to watchdogs. If you're watchdogs, then you 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 tear down things, you know, you basically uh, uh destroy the myths and the structures that bind people and you try to build a new again you know so so um what comes to mind just before i just when i was preparing this lecture is sometimes uh people or organizations can be viewed as so-called enemies of the state right can become dissidents right this this uh, uh former uh president of the czechoslovakian new the new czechoslovakian republic right they were communists before so he was labeled a dissident, you know. Uh, his name is Václav Havel. 
you can Google for him and he's a playwright and writer and so on. So he was, he was tearing down something, right? He became a, he was labeled as a dissident, but later when the, the, the country become a democratic, he was put as a president of the Czechoslovakian, uh, uh nation. So, so in the process of building, you could be tearing down, um, rotten, and uh, unwanted structures so that we could rebuild a new. So, so we are all in this process of nation building. Right? So civil society, then what is civil society organizations? I think you, you already, some of you may already be involved in certain civil society organizations, whether or not uh, uh, it is in an organized format or a formal format or even and uh, uh, what they call an online or an un informal kind of format. You know, in other words, there's no formal identity, but it's a community of people. Nowadays, uh, uh, there's there's many online communities. Yeah, online communities. You can mobilize people online as well, and there's a whole subject altogether. So basically, uh, you um, civil society organizations come in different shapes and sizes and uh, you can be on a national level um, fairly huge ones that you know have branches in each uh, state or an international one and or simply one that is regional or just confined to each state you know which is more i guess more uh, uh, common it would be more common to have uh, those that are uh, just local and, and regional yeah um, the national ones, you probably need a lot of funding in order to run your programs and so on. Eh? So, okay, so it is a term, it, it is the term that first became popular in the 1980s and it now signifies a wide range of organized and organic. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. It's not in, in, it's not unorganized, it's called organic groups. Organic groups are simply, like I said, one of those, those is that, uh, just, Online communities that have no legal entity, lah. Huh? Um, organic means that it is there to address a problem, perhaps in community or society, for that moment and period in time. Okay, so it can it it includes non-governmental organizations like us. Um, it is uh, it could include trade unions as well. Not so, not not so much in in our our place, huh? Social movements, yes, there'll be quite a lot of them eh, here. And grassroots organizations, online networks and communities. And also, of course, don't forget the faith groups as well. All faith groups are fairly, fairly, um, or faith-based faith -based organizations are fairly huge uh, civil society organizations. Eh? Um, of course, uh, I, I, when you talk about online communities, I can think of, a few, one of them is the, the gardening community. You know? So, so the, the people with different interests come together. Huh? The gardening community, and then there's some with diaspora. You know, there's a diaspora, uh, Malaysian diaspora, put it this way. Huh? They are all over the world, but they are part of that huge uh, diaspora community. Okay? And then um, um, you can have very grassroots associations. Those of you who uh, live more in the rural areas will will understand how important those uh, grassroots organizations and associations are. When, uh, especially for what they call for the organizations or for indi indigenous peoples, yeah, orang asal. Uh, in our case here, there are many needs in the rural areas, and I think um, it is natural for people. Who are communal, like our Iban friends and family, eh, who will will garner together to form groups, you not know, to address different situations. Um, so, thus giving rise to uh, social movements and so on. I, uh, I can, I, I, uh, yeah, I can think of a few right now. But uh, yeah, there are other uh, kinds of uh, civil society organizations as well. Perhaps. Um, Independent radio is another one. Independent radio television. So far, I do not see any independent television. Eh? But um, uh, the other one, maybe more in the city, would be some neighborhood organizations or neighborhood 
um, specific for that local area. Uh, sometimes you will see um, them being active, sometimes not. You know? um, the other category perhaps will be some think tanks or research houses, um, uh, more on the, on the academic side. They could or they may or may not be related nah, to certain political groups or political parties. Um, usually, political parties will want to to uh, have a separate think tank that um, perhaps reaches out to youths and or and, and the and the community. You know, uh, yeah. Um, so so that they can it can can be a considered. A civil society organizations as well. All right. So I think um, these are the various types. I think we've more or less uh, gone through some of them. So in terms of size and all that, it can be uh, very, very different in size. Maybe um, to name the international ones, it would be like Oxfam. Um, I'm sure there are many others that you can think of. Um, social movement, mass social movement, Things like Arab Spring, you know, uh, more on a local or national level, we will have Perse rallies. I'm sure some of you will remember the past Perse rallies. Um, yeah, and on a more local level, maybe you would know some of these uh, names as well, um, of various size, uh, uh, history and sizes. Huh? Um, for women empowerment, we will, we do have. I think one of your uh, uh, somebody who's on the board is also a president of Sarawak Women for Women Society. Huh? So these uh, 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 they champion um, rights of children and women, um, in particular violence against women in the past. But of course, our vision and mission um, can change. Yeah, the vision especially needs to be fine-tuned and changed, um, not on a yearly level, but sometimes at critical junctures in the growth of the organization, vision may change and the way we do things may change. So um, in the past, I think uh, SWPS used to focus on violence against women. Uh, it's their core subject, uh, core, core principle uh, uh, subject matter. The, the other one is Purple Lily. Um, have you heard of them? They are a small group. They are pretty active in delivering um, uh, financial literacy and economic empowerment programs to rural women. Yeah, so they are here. I think based in Kuching. The other, um, yeah, the, the other examples would be those that work on indigenous and uh, issues affecting uh, indigenous peoples. No? So you have Save Rivers. Uh, they are mostly talking about the environment and NTFP. Yeah? Um, I'm sure there are many hosts of many others. Okay, then we just want to give a shout out to the Strawa AIDS Concern Society or SACS. Um, these are the people that are working on health issues in particular. They also work on marginalized communities, marginalized community of uh, LGBT and so on. Uh. Um, so we, they are working on trying to get to zero AIDS, zero AIDS of, uh, I mean, uh, zero, um, yeah, also into matter of sexual reproductive health and so on. Uh. So, okay, the other big group, I think, would be the ethnic ones, uh, the ethnic associations. Um, I'm sure you can think of, if you are a Chinese, eh, there's a lot of these type of associations. Um, there, there is very few that bring together all and everyone, but you know the ethnic one seems to be <laughs> a big one in Sarawak here. Uh, so anyway, I'm not not looking down on them in any way, eh? but they are. Um, it depends on how how you see them. You know, their promotion of culture, they are uh, culture and and. and uh, Lo local values, I think that that is all fine. Huh? Yeah, so I, we have just, uh, my colleague just put Sarawak, um, Sarawak, Iba, uh, Sarawak Dayak Iban Association, Sadia. Sadia is, is more than that. I think Sadia is uh, 
not only Dayak, but in general, it, uh, they are not just talking about cultures and stuff, but they are also into, uh, in the past, they used to work on land rights, huh? land rights and other issues affecting the native community. Uh, I'm sure they still do, lah. they still do work on this matter. Um, the other category uh, which we try and put ourselves in is the civil and political rights or matters of democracy. Huh? So we, um, uh, our, now our name is actually in, in Bahasa. Uh, we are known as uh, Persatuan Pemangking Daya Masyarakat or otherwise Rise of Social Efforts. Huh? Um, yeah, so it's some of us, uh, but we are a bit of a rare breed uh, because we work on matters of free and fair elections, voter education, civic education, that sort of thing. Huh? And um, good governance to a small extent. Okay, So uh, these are the different, different types of uh, organization i think we have this is not an exhaustive list lah, huh? okay now the roles uh, maybe it's just to bring you straight to the point here and i'll go back to my other slide later on um one of the major roles which i see as uh, as someone involved in civil society for such a long for quite some time is that we are uh, um organization associations, NGOs, interest groups, we are trying to bridge the gap between normal citizens and the state or the political powers that be. So the, the, the political community, so to speak, or MPs or people in parliament, like what you saw um, in, in what you call in the video before. Yeah, so basically we, we bring together uh, and prefer the uh, interests, concerns, uh, uh, values of the uh, people to the, the, the one that can make decision, which can be the state or any arms of the government. Uh, it can be the legislature, it can be the executive, and it can be our local government as well, yeah? the councils. right? So we, we, which we are the one that bridge this gap because as one voice, you are you're not going to be, nobody's going to pay attention to you. But as a group, as a people with membership, uh, as a people with tools that are available to us now, with tools of internet, tools of uh, communication, we can influence decision making, right? So that is one of our primary role as a civil society. And of course, along the way, we encourage participatory democracy, and we also look into the matter of mutual deliberation. It, it is only with deliberation, consultation, that we can get the things that we want, or that we can get the problems that we have solved. All right? So uh, this uh, diagram uh, done by a friend of mine, actually, uh, is a very, very good uh, diagram that uh, reflects uh, what I see as important, one of the important roles of um, of civil society organizations. Now, of course, there are other roles huh, of civil society organizations, uh, one of which you will see very commonly here in Sarawak and Malaysia is as service providers, civil society as service providers, meaning that, um, uh, I mean, my slide say here, uh, basic community healthcare services and also education. Now. I can I can tell you that there's uh, many many service providers. Okay, SWWS is one of them. They provide counseling or para counseling services to women in need or women that needs help. Okay, women in crisis. Uh, put it this way, right? The the Diwira School. Okay, is a school that gives uh, education, provide education for stateless children. Have you ever heard of them? Stateless children, they cannot go to school, but they can go to this particular school called the Lira. Huh? So they are providers of a, uh, services to the community. Otherwise, we wish, without which um, children or other marginalized parts of the communities would be left behind. Okay, there are, I'm sure there are many other examples of service providers. Huh? Um, the other one which we don't see that 
much here is watchdogs, huh? or organizations that watch government, that makes government accountable, or government institutions accountable. So these are called watchdogs. Um, some uh, one one of the national one that you can sometimes read in in the news is um, uh, C four C four Center for uh, battling against chronism and uh, uh, corruption. Huh? So uh, these are this is uh, this their their name comes to mind. C four. There are other other watchdogs as well. Okay, and campaigners and advocates. I think this one more lah. More, more of us are involved in that. There's, there's more of that. Okay, and uh, I mean, if you think of uh, the local community, like the business community, okay, the manufacturers association, or even I don't know the um, uh, uh, federation of uh, the business chambers, uh, chambers of commerce. Uh, they are also like lobbying for you know for the, the community of the for the interests of the community. Including the advocates association, you know, ah, yeah. So the the bar council, the advocates association, these are all, um, um basically, uh, professional groups or business interest groups, um, that lobby for certain things, uh, certain certain uh, issues and matters that are, uh, uh, or values that they champion. Okay, um, the other role of Civil society is building active uh, citizenship. Yeah, building active citizenship. So that uh, we uh, Rose see uh, see ourselves as uh, part of that. We, we motivate um, civic engagement at the local level, and we try to get people to, to become participative um, citizens. Huh? And we, um, yeah, we, we we try to provide platform for people to do that. Um, so that they can be part of the election process, in our case, election and democratic processes, including elections. Huh? Um, uh, so that, that's what we, we are doing. Um, then there are other roles such as, uh, um, this one may be less, okay, but some NGOs uh, even sit on the, on the World, World, what, World Bank's Climate uh, Investment Fund. You know there are there are international organizations that are invited to be in in uh, governance process. Huh? Um, perhaps on a national level, you will you will see, like for example, I can remember um, the anti uh, anti trafficking in persons, huh? ATIP, huh? anti trafficking in persons council. Uh, they include NGOs, okay, because the problem of uh, 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 Human trafficking is such that it, you know you need NGOs who works on a local level to be able to tackle this issue. So they invite um, NGOs that that do work on on uh, on the ground to come on the board or on the council, no? on the active some council. So and hence participate in uh, uh, the governance process. Okay, so. Um, there are other examples that I wish I think individually you can think of. Yeah. So these are some of the roles that we have as civil society organization. Um, you can ask questions later on. Huh? Yeah. So that uh, more or less completes my first section. The other section, I think I think I have already, in a way, told you uh, a little bit about ourselves. So we started as a as a group of concerned citizens as well. Um, that's how we evolved. I think our growth was very organic as, as well. Um, and now uh, we came together after serving as polling and counting agents uh, back in uh, the 13 general elections, after which we told ourselves uh, we cannot just remain as it is. Things need to, to get better in Sarawak. And we wanted, then we uh, came together to do brainstorming session, after which we went into the matter of uh, civic and voter education eh? and uh, of course uh, uh, we, we came up with certain modules that uh, uh, we started sharing um, you know so, so that was our, our beginning lah. okay so we are now still involved uh, in the on the matter of uh, civic and voter education but um, um, 
the, the, the COVID pandemic has actually put a big challenge in our way. Lah, yeah? And um, yeah, so, so, so we are still growing. Um, we are now uh, registered uh, under ROS. Uh, okay, I told you why already, why we formed this. So we, um, um, yeah, we, we are still very much um, volunteer based. In other words, uh, we depend on, on people to, to volunteer themselves for our projects and our initiatives. Uh, we only currently have one uh, outreach and program officer, but he is uh, finding it difficult because it is uh, 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 the COVID has presented us much challenges. I think those of you who are involved in, in NGOs will, not, will feel the same way as well. Huh? We have your own methods and ways of uh, uh, overcoming the challenges. All right, just to share with you a little bit of the challenges that we face. Um, and I think this one may also be common la, to, to, to you guys. Um, um, funding challenge as an NGO, uh, we need some money to move the ground or to move the uh, programs and initiatives or projects. Okay, so always uh, we need to be on the lookout for fundings from uh, outside. Okay, from Within the community, mostly it will come from um, uh, uh, generous uh, members of the community, uh, uh, Malaysians, uh, Sarawakians, okay. And the other challenge that we face is um, this was early on when we started out uh, um, registration. Um, I'm not sure whether you know, it, it's sometimes not easy for for organizations like ours to register ourselves under the registry of societies. Okay, so it is, uh, we get queried. Um, in the case of Rosa, we, get, we got queried as to why uh, we are using uh, the Sarawak colors, you know, as simple as that. Okay, we, we, in our logo is a, is, a, is a flower. Okay, the, the rose flower is like, has happened to have all the colors of our Sarawak flag. So it's like that is also a no no. So we have to go and tweak the color a bit, you know. Yeah. So the other query that we get queried is uh, are we political organization? No, no, no. Look at our objectives. Look at our aims and objectives that is already submitted in our uh, memorandum and uh, what do you call it, in our in our constitution. Very clearly not a political party, not a political party. And yet we still got queried on that. So it took a long while to, to process our registration. Huh? Um Mobilization, there is ongoing uh, challenges. Okay, we have to find new and different ways to try to mobilize people to uh, assist in the projects and the initiatives. Media and publicity, again, ongoing uh, challenge. Why? Because um, our local, uh, what do you call news, uh, uh, what do you call journalists and reporters, huh? But somehow they will pay a lot of attention to ministers and politicians, but not so much to NGO, if you notice. Yeah? So we've got to make ourselves, if we want to get across our message, if we want to get across our, our campaigns, we've got to be quite tactful in handling this part of the media and publicity. So we constantly communicate with our target audience, you know, using different, different ways. Uh, now, of course, we have the social media. And not just the news portals and news newspaper. Huh? Um, these are this is probably my last slide. Okay, this is uh, how to build capacity of civil society organizations. Um, these are some of the ways. These are some of the important subject matter. If you are a young organization, if you lead a young uh, and new social movement or, or organization. That is just starting to grow. Please look into these uh, uh, things. Uh. Uh, point number one is uh, your incorporation, registration, formulating of vision, mission, revisiting that it from time to time. I think this one is very important. If you don't get your own house in order, then you can't move forward. Okay, budgeting and financial management also very important. Don't let your accounts uh, lie on the side and not 
pay much attention to it, even though you don't spend much, but actually at the end of your financial year, financial year, you need to make sure you are floating, right? You need to make sure you don't make a loss, okay? Uh, you need to make sure that your funds are enough for the next two years at least. Okay? So uh, connected to the last point of fundraising and communication. So fundraising, uh, different, different ways of raising funds, all you need to do is ask. Ask the right, your right target audience. Ask your donors. Of course, donors can get the kit as well. But at the same time, you uh, try to be innovative in asking. Okay? If you don't ask, nobody's going to give you money. Okay. Um, so ask, uh, share your vision, mission, share your, your success stories, and you will be able to get funds. Third point, project proposal and monitoring and evaluation. If you manage to get yourself a project, uh, awareness project perhaps, huh? outreach project, uh, make sure you put in place your monitoring. What, what so First of all, we learn to write proposals. Second, uh, monitor it when you're doing it and then evaluate, constantly evaluate your project and see whether or not it is it achieves its purpose or not. Yeah? Um, fourth point, advocacy and campaigns. I think this one, everyone has to learn how to advocate for certain things. Yeah? Reforms in the law, changes in the way of the, how the administration does things, then we need to uh, use all the various tools for our advocacy campaigns. Huh? Um, last but not least is the media and publicity. Um, I mentioned this already, I think. We need to get our message across. Um, we need to constantly engage with media so that they they know what you are all about and, um, you know, and they'll give you publicity. Uh, I think it also talks about communication. Huh? Communication should be up there as well. Communication is not just with outside world, outside your own organization or outside the members, but it's also internal communication. You need to be able to communicate well with your own volunteers and with your own members huh, to spread the information among among your own people as well. So yes, so that, that's my uh, little sharing for this afternoon. I hope it uh, encourages you to uh, step forward into uh, involving yourself even as you know, uh, you're looking at leadership. So I think this is one of the good incubator uh, platforms for 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 young leaders to to be involved in civil society organizations. Choose your passion. Choose your what do you call your interests. Uh, which area of of life which are you interested in, or which area of of good governance are you interested in? Um, uh, park yourself in there as a normal member, perhaps, and later on you can take on the what you call the leadership role if you are. You know, if you are good in what you do, lah, and uh, this is a way to uh, what do you call, uh, like incubator, uh, one of the place to incubate um, uh, leadership that will be uh, that will be uh, concentrating on values, um, and that will put focus on policies, on good governance and policies, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, of course, this is the, not the only way. Um, there are many other ways. You can also uh, put yourself in a youth organizations. Um, there are many, many youth organizations rising up right now. So uh, try to look around if you're interested and see what they have to offer. And then, uh, you know, you, it can be your launching pad. Lah, huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, uh, for listening.